Let us all stand in reverence for the reading of God's word. The reading of God's word is found in the Old Testament in Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 1 to 9 and in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 23 to 25 and in the New Testament in the book of Romans chapter 10 verses 8 to 17. Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 1 to 9. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, If I bring the sword upon the land, and the land and the people of the land take a man from among them, and make him their watchman, and if he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people, then if anyone who hears the sound of the trumpet does not take warning, the sword comes and takes takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. But he, if he had taken warning, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, so that the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any one of them, that person is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. In Leviticus chapter 23, verses 23 to 25, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with blast of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, and you shall present a food offering to the Lord. In the New Testament, in Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 17. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing to the word of Christ. Please join me in prayer. Our gracious God, as we turn to the pages of your holy word, we recognize our need for your divine guidance. Illuminate our hearts and mind by the power of your Holy Spirit, and may the words that we hear today not only inform our intellect, 
but transform our very lives. Open our eyes to see the profound truths within your scriptures and grant us the wisdom to apply them to our daily walk. And may the words of my mouth and our meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The title of our sermon this morning, our first service, is Watchmen Trumpeting the Gospel of the Reformation. It was a sermon that was preached by our founding pastor, Reverend Noli Malabuyo, last uh, October 30, 2016, in his congregation at Big Springs Community Church in California. So, beloved Congregation of Christ, every last day of or last Sunday of October is uh, what the Reformed Churches call the Reformation Sunday. So this month, this coming October 29, the whole Reformed Church community will be celebrating Reformation Sunday. So typically on a tuwing pinakahuling Sunday ng October, we commemorate the start of the Protestant Reformation. And this marks the anniversary of Martin Luther's traditional, traditionally recognized posting of the 95 Theses on the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany in October 31, 1517. So let us recount the occurrences in Europe during that fateful day in October 31, 1517. And I'm not referring to the Halloween celebration last 506 years ago. And Halloween was a pagan celebration that was introduced by the uh, Druids in the British Isles. Hindi siya nakarating sa America, ano na, mga 1900s na. And we here in the Philippines have... Uh, Maano tayo, mas advanced pa tayo sa mga Amerikano in terms of the celebration and practice because we owe it to the Spanish uh, colonizers. So yung practice natin dates back during the Spanish colonial period. In the Philippines, there is a combination of three dates that uh, is celebrated. So according to the National Commission for, for Culture and Arts, yung NCC, NCCA, sinasabi nila na tatlo daw yung celebration nga ng Halloween. So yung October 31st, yung tinatawag na All Hallows Eve. At katulad din ang naging practice ng mga medieval Roman Catholics, one day before All Saints Day yon So yung October 1 naman is All Saints Day. And yung October 2, yun yung tinatawag natin na All Souls Day. So, yung tradition natin in celebrating uh, such, mas nauna pa nga tayo. Dahil yung mga American brothers natin, mga 1900s lang. And definitely, the Germans during the 16th century, noong mga 1517, wala pa silang alam tungkol nun sa practice na yun about the wandering spirits of the dead, yung mga trick or treat. And... I'm not referring to yun nga, yung night na may isang tao na nag-post kung ano yung nasa kanyang isip. Isang uh, Roman Catholic Augustinian monk. His name was Martin Luther and his post, he posted his 95 Theses. Hindi po sa Facebook like what we do uh, during these days, diba? But he posted it on the wall of Wittenberg uh, Castle Church. Dahil in the old times, yun yung parang announcement. Nilalagay mo doon sa isang public area where the people can see and they would post it. And similarly, doon sa amin pong mga nakakatanda, noong nag-aaral po kami, bulletin board, yung mga importanteng announcements sa school would be posted in the bulletin board. But nowadays, you post everything on social media. But to clarify a few things about this historic event, para na rin sa education natin, ng ating lahat, first of all, 
yung ginawa na action ni Luther was not a declaration that he was leaving the Catholic Church and he was going to establish the Protestant Church. But rather, si Luther was an angry Catholic and he was pleading to the uh, emperor, I think Charles V, yung, uh, yung emperor at that time, and the Roman Pope, si Leo X, to stop the abuses of indulgence. Yung practice po ng indulgence ay kaparaanan that was instituted by the Roman Catholics na para yung isang tao na namatay na ay he would have less time in purgatory. So the faithful Catholics would pay a sum of money for this indulgence. And Pope Leo X pushed hard the idea of uh, mataas pa, maging mataas yung collection nila for indulgence because during that time, bankrupt na yung Roman Catholic Church. Dahil si Pope Leo, ano siya, masyadong extravagant yung lifestyle niya. During his reign, it was the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica. And he hired the famous uh, artist during that time. I think it was uh, Raphael na hinair niya para mag-decorate uh, ng mga room sa Vatican. So si Raphael po, contemporary niya si Michelangelo at saka si Leonardo da Vinci. Doon kinuha yung pangalan ng mga Ninja Turtles, di ba? Pero they were Renaissance artists. So secondly, yung 95 Thesis ni Luther was an ordinary invitation to the academics during that time for the debate about indulgences. And thirdly, his thesis were most exclusively about the abuses of the Roman Catholic Church, also related to several practices and centering on indulgences. And fourthly, he did not expect that his 95 Thesis would spread so rapidly and spark the Protestant Reformation. Lastly, in uh, 1517, hindi pa nga natin pwedeng masabi na si Martin Luther ay Protestant. O kaya, Reform. Dahil nung mga panahon na yun, 1517, they have not yet understand such Protestant doctrines as the uh, Five Solas. But however, Nagkaroon ng uh, malaking pag-upheaval uh, sa Roman Catholic Church because of the actions of uh, Martin Luther. And that compelled Pope Leo to issue a decree. Ang tawag po doon ay parang uh, papal bull. Kasi yung uh, bula, yun po yung parang seal ng mga, ng mga people in authority para ipahayag yung kanilang pag-oppose uh, dun sa mga thesis ni Martin Luther. So, he was summoned in April 16 to 18 in 1521. Halos apat na taon ang lumipas no, from his posting of the uh, thesis to 1521. Yung pong tinatawag na Imperial Council na ang nagpatawag ay yung emperor, yung emperador nung panahon na yun. Dahil yung Imperial Council, they are composed of the magistrates and the uh, clergies. Ang akala po ni Luther, it would be a debate about his thesis. But pagdating po doon, it was an appeal for Luther to recant or to withdraw yung kanyang mga statements. Ang tawag po doon sa Imperial Council na yun, it was a famous uh, bit of worms. So... German po kasi yun, kaya yung W nila is pronounced as worms. So ito po yung famous uh, gathering, nandun po yung Pope, nandun din po yung, ah, wala yung Pope, nandun po yung Emperor, and nandun po yung mga princes ng uh, Germany. Kaya nandito po yung famous uh, answer ni, ni Luther. Kasi nung the first day that he, that he was summoned, Akala niya magde-debate pero he asked for time. Dahil siyempre alam na niya by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, alam niya na yung kung ano yung tinuturo ng scriptures. Pero hindi yun ang gustong mangyari ng Imperial Council. Kaya ito po yung naging parang response ni Luther. Sabi niya, 
Do you want an answer without debate? Kasi hindi nga siya pinaalaw na magpaliwanag. Kaya nandito po yung kanyang parang famous na reply. Ang sabi niya, My conscience is captive to the word of God. To go against conscience is neither safe for us nor open to us. Here I stand, I can do no other. God help me. Amen. At dahil doon sa kanyang uh, posture at sa, kanya, sa kanyang stand, si Luther was condemned as a heretic. Pero instrumental yung naging response niya dahil yun ay naging isang kumbaga, isang bahagi ng Reformation Plank na tinatawag natin na Sola Scriptura. Na ang ating mga conscience ay magiging captive lamang to the Word of God. Kaya yung ibang mga theologians would say that the Vit of Worms, yung Imperial Council, can even be more significant to the posting of the 95 Theses. Kaya nung nag-transpire yun, from 1517 to 1521, Luther was already convinced about the doctrine that are known today as the Five Solas. Wherein, if we could summarize it, it is... Salvation by grace alone, received by faith alone, in Christ alone, as revealed in scriptures alone, to the glory of God alone. Ito po yung summary ng tinatayuan ni Luther based on the true gospel and opposing to the church's authority during that time. So, in excommunicate si uh, Luther ng Pope, nung Roman Catholic Church, tinawag siya na isang wild boar, di ba? isang mabangis na animal. And his break with the Roman Catholic Church was final. And according to the Reformers, since the Church of Rome was not preaching the true gospel and it was not rightly administering the sacraments, it was not exercising the church discipline according to the scriptures, the Roman Catholic Church has ceased to be a true church. So, according to our text, Luther was an important watchman who trumpeted the true gospel that was almost extinguished by the medieval church. And Ezekiel also spells out the duty of the Lord, which the Lord assigned to his watchman. Nung sinabi ng Panginoon kay Ezekiel, si Ezekiel was a prophet before and during the uh, exile of the people of Israel in Babylon, the Lord anointed him to warn God's people of the impending judgment against them because of their multitude of sins. And he was to preach only the word of God, and if he did not ordain, do his ordained duty, the people will perish and yung blood ng mga people will be upon his hand. But if he did, and the people did listen, magiging, uh, pag hindi nakinig yung mga tao, yung mga tao would be accountable for their own disobedience. So in preaching the gospel, Jesus also trumpeted the good news of the coming kingdom. He also heralded yung bad news, yung coming judgment on those who would not obey the Lord. So yung title po ng sermon natin is The Watchman Trumpeting the, the Gospel of the Reformation. Medyo mahaba po yung title, no? And yung lagi kong ina-attempt, lalo na yung napakaraming English words nito, I, I try to translate dahil lagi natin nag-grasp yung ating uh, pros, thought process bilang mga Pilipino sa salita natin, no? If I would attempt to translate yung Mga bantay na nagpapahayag sa mabuting balita ng pagbabago. No? Kasi yung Reformation, uh, mahirap siyang i-translate din eh, no? in the context. But the essence of yung Reformation is yung pagbabago o yung pagpapabuti ng kalalagayan natin. No? So, mga bantay na nagpapahayag sa mabuting balita ng pagbabago. At meron po tayong tatlong uh, headings. First, the trumpet duty of the watchman. Yung tungkuli na magbabala o magbigay hudyat 
ng mga tagabantay. Pangalawa, the trumpet message of the watchman. Ang kapahayagang magbigay pabatid o hudyat ng mga tagabantay. And third, the response of the people to the watchman's trumpet. Ang tugo ng mga tao sa hudyat ng mga tagabantay. The trumpet duty of the watchman. So God has commanded Israel to blow trumpets. They are made of ram's uh, horn. Ang tawag po doon ay shofar. And this is done, yung blowing ng trumpet of, on different occasions. Para po doon sa mga nakarating na doon sa Rizal Recreation Christian Camp or Christian Center, kilala niyo po siguro si Pastor Joe. Si Pastor Joe Maok, siya po yung may world record yata ng biggest na turumpo. Nandun po yun sa Rizal, Laguna. Rizal yung pangalan ng bayan pero nasa Laguna po yun. At pag nagkataon na dumalaw kayo doon, syempre ipapakita niya na pinapaikot niya yung kanyang pinakamalaking turumpo daw sa buong mundo. No? Hindi ko lang alam kung may nakabreak na nung record na yun. At isa ring novelty na pinapakita niya ay meron siyang ano nga, yung ram's horn, yung shofar. Ano siya, malaki siya. Siguro mga one and a half feet, malaki, malaki eh. Tapos, ang trivia niya, papa-attempt na patunugin. Hindi ko lang alam kung sino ang sumubok sa, <laughs> nung pumunta kami doon ni na Elder Ronald. At nanag, hindi ko alam kung sino sumubok, pero may sumubok eh. Puro hangin lang lumabas, walang tunog. Pero pag si uh, Pastor Joe ang nagpatunog, naibabari niya yung tunog nung trumpet. Yun nga, yung sungay ng ram. Kaya, makikita natin na iba't iba yung gamit nga nung trumpet na yon At iba-iba rin ang nagiging tunog. So the first one, yung use nung blowing of that trumpet, katulad nung binasa natin sa Leviticus 23, is during the Feast of Trumpets. And this is to be blown on the first day of the seventh month. Katulad nga ng sinasabi doon sa Leviticus that there will be a blast of trumpets. It will be a day of rest. It will be a holy gathering. Masaya, so merong mga food offerings. And this day was the beginning of the new year. New year kasi, ano na yun eh, tapos na yung harvest season at saka maghahanda na sila para sa winter. So the people would be assembled, they would worship, they would give thanks to the Lord, and they would offer various animal and food offerings to God. So yun yung unang uh, occasion. Yung pangalawang occasion na binoblow yung trumpet was in the wilderness. When the trumpet was uh, sounded, may signal para mag-move out doon sa camp. Remember that the uh, Israelites were moving from uh, through the wilderness and they would be gathered to hear God's word. So, binoblow din yung trumpet. Yung third, yung third occasion na binoblow yung trumpet would be during times of war. It would be like a call to arms during battles and meron din call to cease the fighting when or when the enemy approaches. So yun yung uh, isa pang gamit nung pag-blow ng trumpet. So yung last use of the blowing of trumpets, dun, sinabi doon sa Ezekiel 33, the watchman is stationed at a watchtower. Usually it would be a high place in the city walls. And the watchman would be watching for any danger signs from invaders. And as, as soon as he determines that there is an approaching uh, danger, he is duty-bound to blow the trumpet to warn the people of Israel to prepare themselves for the coming danger. And we have seen such uh, importance of sounding the alarm because about two weeks ago, siguro alam nyo naman, na last October 7, nagkaroon ng brazen infiltration sa more than 20 towns sa Israel. Hindi lang towns, kasama rin ang army bases na ni-raid ng mga 
Hamas, di ba? These are the Palestinian ruling group sa Palestine na for the first time, yung worst breach in the defenses of Israel in more than 50 years ay nangyari. So, it shattered Israel's sense of security. Dahil for hours, we can imagine that the strongest military in the uh, Middle East was rendered powerless by a weak enemy. Nabigla po sila dahil nga hindi nabigyan ng babala. So anong nangyari? It left about 1,400, hindi ko alam yung tamang bilang, about ganong karami ang namatay ng mga Israelis. Kasama doon ang mga sundalo, There are about 100 to 200 people that were taken as hostages at na, na overrun at least four military camps. And napakalaki nung stretch ng pag-breach ng mga Hamas. Ang sabi, it covers around 30 miles of Israeli territory. Siyempre, nagkaroon ng initial investigation and the four official, Israeli officials, says that the success of the attack based on their early assessment, it was rooted dun sa a number of security failures, yung intelligence ng Israel. Kaya yung failure ng mga intelligence officers na pwede nating sabihin na sila yung watchmen during these days, to monitor the key communications and activities of the uh, Hamas attackers ay hindi nangyari. So, the watchman's duty to watch for any danger and to warn the people, they have failed. And how does he warn? Paano ba nagbibigay ng babala yung watchman? Ano ba yung message na binibigay niya? The trumpet message of the watchman. Ano ang kapahayagan o yung hudyat na kinakailangan niyang ibigay sa mga tao. And what did God assign Ezekiel to do as watchman? Ano ba ang binigay niyang uh, duty? Sinabi niya sa verse 7, Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. Whatever the Lord tell his watchman to say to the people, they are to say it with Nothing that they could add or nothing that they could subtract. If it is good news, they are to proclaim it with joy. And if it is bad news, kahit na masamang balita, they are to proclaim it even with weeping and lamentations and sorrow and call the people to repentance. In the ancient days, there are heralds. Ito yung mga mensahero. Dahil... Napaka-primitive pa ng communication during that time, they would delegate this task of uh, sending these messages sa tinatawag na mga heralds. So if they won the battle, yung herald o yung mensahero, he will be welcomed as a hero. But if he brought yung bad news of defeat, ang nangyayari, minsan, pinapatay yung tagapagbalita ng masamang Uh, balita. So such are God's watchmen. They are prophets. They are to proclaim the word of God to the people regardless of the consequences. Kahit na anong kahinatnan, kinakailangan niyang maihatid. If it is a bad news of judgment because of sin, kinakailangan niyang sabihin sa mga tao. If it is the good news of salvation from their enemies, yun din ang duty ng mga watchmen. And God had warned Ezekiel about his duty. If he did not warn the people of the impending disaster, pag hindi niya binigyan ng babala doon sa parating na malaking kapahamakan and the people perish, siya ang mananagot. Sabi doon sa verse 6, His blood I will require at the watchman's hand. When Jesus started his ministry, he started it with a proclamation. Sabi doon sa Mark, Uh, chapter 1 verse 15 the kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe in the gospel so yung announcement na yun it was like a double edged sword if the hearers 
repented of their sin and believe in the gospel of Christ, they enter into the kingdom of God. If they did not, they are cast into the outer darkness. Today, pastors are commanded by God to preach the true gospel according to the Second Helvetic Confession of 1566. Ito po yung confession na ginamit ng mga reform brothers natin sa Switzerland and it has gained a wide acceptance in the reform and Presbyterian churches. Ang sabi po doon, the preaching of the word is the true word of God. But how do we know that pure word of God is being preached? Kinakailangan po, maiassess natin siya against two qualifications. Una, first, the preacher must be lawfully called. Only ordained ministers of the word are to preach during worship service. Hindi po pwede yung mga self-proclaimed pastors. Second, neither any other word of God is to be invented, nor it is to be expected from heaven. Therefore, the preaching of the word is the word of God in so far as it is faithfully exposited and applied by the preacher according to the inspired scripture. Hindi pwede po yung iniimbento ng mga tagapagturo yung sinasabi nilang word of God. Dahil hindi pwedeng tanggapin ng Panginoon yung false gospels o kaya yung mga half gospel. Kaya yung mga pastor na ganun o yung mga tagapagturo, they fail to be a faithful watchman of the Lord. So the members of this church, kinakailangan din tayong maging mapagbantay so that we could stab off yung destruction. So when you hear your pastors or any that is speaking from the pulpit preaching self-inventions, we must blow the alarm, we must sound the trumpet. When the pastor says that merong sinabi sa kanya ang Panginoon, he has revealed a new revelation, may narinig daw siya sa Panginoon, o kaya may nakita siyang pangitain sa Panginoon, kinakailangan natin na to blow the trumpet, to sound the alarm. When you hear yung mga sinasabing name it and claim it gospel, yung mga prosperity gospel, we should sound the alarm. When God's law, yung sin and repentance is missing from the preaching of the gospel, we should sound the alarm. We should blow the trumpet. And when your pastor or anyone from the pulpit teaches that you are saved by faith and works and not by faith alone, we should sound the alarm. We should blow the trumpet. When your pastor teaches that the declaration of popular theologians about creeds and confessions are more authoritative than the Holy Scriptures, we must sound the alarm. On the other hand, if your pastor teaches or any one from the pulpit teaches that you yourself can rightly interpret the Bible without the help or counsel, from your pastor or teaching elders, you should also blow the trumpet. We should sound the alarm. If your pastor neglects his duty as God watchman, it is our duty as God's people to be the watchman. Tayo na ang dapat maging tagapagbantay. Because like Paul's uh, commendation, you are to test all spirits like the Bereans. To listen only to sound doctrine. But if the pastor or anyone from the pulpit does his res responsibility as a watchman, what, what must the people do? Kung ipinapahayag ng pastor dutifully and faithfully ang kanyang responsibilidad, ano ang dapat na maging tugo ng mga tao na tayong mga nakikinig Dun sa tagapagbantay. While the watchman has his duties, tayo rin mga nakikinig ay may responsibilidad. If Ezekiel proclaimed God's warning of judgment against yung mga gross sins, yung mga mabibigat na kasalanan ng mga tao, he already did what God commanded him to do. Then if anyone did not heed his warning and he perishes, 
Sabi dun sa verse 5, His blood shall be upon himself. They are responsible for their own destruction. Hindi yung watchman. Hindi yung tagabantay o yung tagapaghatid ng mensahe. The watchman cannot make them repent or believe in the word of God. Instrumento lang siya. And these are the work of the Holy Spirit alone to give new hearts and new minds to God's people. What is the sinner to do? Ano ang kinakalang gawin ng makasalanan? He has two options. First, he may heed God's word as announced by the watchman, whether be it good news or bad news. If it is good news for salvation from enemies or from sin or from God's wrath, he is to be thankful for such salvation. If it is the bad news of judgment and punishment against sin, he is to repent or turn away from sin and turn to God for redemption. And second, the sinner cannot, can reject God's word as proclaimed by the watchman. If he does, God's word is not only bad news, it will be the bad news of eternal death. His blood is upon his own head. No one else is responsible for his own condemnation, destruction, except himself. As Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. And as amplified in verse 9, he shall die in his iniquity. Kaya nga, yung mga tagapagbantay, yung watchmen of the new covenant, yung mga ministers, yung mga elders of the church, carry a heavy burden on their shoulders. They are the one who are keeping watch over our souls as those who will give an account Sabi dan sa Hebrews 13:17. And Paul speaks of their duty as apostles sent by Christ. Yun sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 to 21. Sabi ni Paul, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. But what is his appeal to all? Be reconciled to God in Christ. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. They are to preach the gospel in season or out of season, because God's judgment is upon them if they didn't. And Paul warns himself, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Only then can he declare his innocence. I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. He has faithfully declared the good news and bad news, both law and grace, repentance and faith, God's mercy and justice, his love and wrath, heaven and hell. That is what Isaiah and Paul declares how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. This watchman must continue blowing the trumpet till the last trumpet is blown to announce the return of Christ from heaven to complete the salvation of his people. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, where the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. Christ's return will be an earth shaking, it will be loud, it will be a visible event. It is not a secret event as many pastors mistakenly teach or claim. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command. 
and with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will be raised first. That is according to 1 Thessalonians 4.16. According to the Apostle John, when this last, the seventh trumpet is blown, loud voices in heaven will announce, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. It will also signal the judgment day. Sabi sa Revelation 11, 18, the time for the dead to be judged and for the rewarding of your servants, the prophets and the saints. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we too are watchmen, bringers of good news. We are to trumpet the gospel proclaimed by Ezekiel, Paul, and the other Protestant reformers, justification by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone. We are to be bringers of the good news to everyone along the path till the last trumpet is blown to announce Jesus' second coming. The bad news is that the state of the church today is very much like the state of the church during the medieval period. False teachings are around us. The Bible is given a mere lip service as the final authority. Many are relying on new revelations that are revealed by their false pastors. Many of those who go to church are biblically illiterate. So they are confused. Because many pastors are not well educated. The seal and knowledge are not balanced. Yung kaalaman at yung sigasig patungkol sa mga salita ng Diyos ay hindi siya balanse. Many have seal for the gospel, but they have no knowledge. Masigasig nga sila, masipag, pero hindi na nila nilalawakan o pinapalawig ang kanilang kaalaman. Naging formality na lang yung kanilang pagsimba. Yung iba naman, they would have great knowledge, but they would have no seal. They would have no compassion. They would have no charity for the church. Many unbelievers despise Christianity. Kasi nga, naging masama na ang patotoo ng iglesia sa mga nasa labas ng church. Because of the numerous scandals involving church leaders, yung mga tele-evangelists are involved in very gross and unimaginable sins. Yung mga sexual sins nila, yung mga financial scandals of this mega churches and they are selling Jesus and manipulating their followers. Kaya some of the Christians, even Christians themselves, have become cynical and apathetic towards the church and some have stayed away. Yung iba hindi na rin binavalue kung sila ba ay members ng church o kaya sila ba ay Kabilang pa, umaaten pa sa isang church. These are the bad news for today's Christians. But the good news is that Christ is the merciful, the preeminent watchman. He knew that judgment was coming upon sinners and he sounded the gospel trumpet of forgiveness. But not only that, he himself provided the way for forgiveness when he took the blood of sinners, and poured it upon his own self. As the gracious watchman, he bore upon his body and is poured out blood, the judgment of God, the wrath of God upon sinners who would repent and believe in him. Dear believers, 
let us draw profound comfort and also courage from Jesus in his unshakable promise that the church will not only endure, but the church, the true church of Christ, will prevail gloriously even against the very gates of hell. Let us pray. Our sovereign Lord, our God and Father, in your goodness and mercy you have given us your word, your holy gospel, by means of which it pleases the Holy Spirit to work faith in our hearts, making us thereby partakers of Christ and all of his treasures and gifts. Render us faithful, we pray, to herald the gospel, to be faithful watchmen. And by your Holy Spirit, turn the hearts of many around so that they may no longer be hardened in their state, so that they may hear the message of our grace in Christ, the preeminent watchmen. Strengthen and guide all who have been called to proclaim your word. Hear us, gracious God our Father, for the sake of Christ, our vigilant, our caring shepherd who watches over us and protects us, the sheep of your pasture, even to the end of the age. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>